What is the best Ethereum layer 2? Well, let's break it down by looking at a couple of different factors. For starters, if we look at what the largest layer 2s are by market cap, we can see that they are Arbitrum, Optimism, and ZK Sync as 1, 2, 3. And then we also have Base and StarkNet in the top 10. So these are the ones that you've most likely heard of. But contrary to some industries, size is not everything in cryptocurrency. So while Optimism does have the largest market share in terms of total value locked on the chain at over 50% of the L2 market, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best layer two. And this website here, l2beat.com, is actually a useful tool for checking out different layer twos on the Ethereum network. So for example, in this column here, you can see what the purpose is for each layer two. And the fifth largest one on the list, DYDX, is actually an app-specific layer two for an exchange. And some other ones are also less universal. So for example, ZK Sync Lite doesn't have as much interoperability as the ZK Sync Era network does, which is a universal layer two. Now, in addition to the size of these L2s, you can look at the risks of each L2 because there are different ones depending on whether it's an optimistic rollup or a zero knowledge rollup. And I'm not gonna get into the technical specifics in this video, but you can see here that there are different risks with these different layer twos. So for example, you could say that the third largest layer two by market cap with their zero knowledge proof technology is potentially more secure in terms of how it validates transactions than uh, the Optimism mainnet is, for example, because their fraud proof system is currently under development and you really need to trust that the Optimism team is an honest actor when you're transacting on their blockchain. The same thing applies to Base, which is another layer two built on the Optimism stack and is actually owned by the Coinbase company, which is a centralized crypto exchange based in the US. So each of these different L2s have different vectors of centralization and different risks depending on what they are. Another thing that you can look at is the activity on the network. So for example, recently the base network has been flying because they had an app released friend.tech, which has been super, super popular. But this graph here really shows how over time the Ethereum transaction per second has stayed relatively level, but the transaction per second that can be processed on layer twos keeps going up and up and up. And down here we can see which network has the maximum daily transactions per second. So currently, aside from the Ethereum main chain, ZK Sync era is coming in as the number one layer two in this instance, but also rounding out the top five are StarkNet, Arbitrum, Optimism, and Base. Now, another important thing to consider when you're deciding which layer two you want to actually use and interact with and you know have your crypto assets live on is of course the fees. And this website here, l2fees.info, gives you a rough idea of how much it's gonna cost to do different things. So for example, Optimism is gonna cost you around four cents to send ETH from one wallet to another, but to make a swap, if you're using a trading app like Uniswap, it's gonna cost you around 10 cents. And the prices are different for each one. Currently, StarkNet is looking to be the most expensive with a 15 cent transaction fee to send ETH and about 45 cents to make a trade. But obviously when you compare all of these to the Ethereum mainnet, it's significantly cheaper because you know sending ETH on the base chain is gonna cost you you know, 76 cents currently, sometimes it's more than a dollar. And to make a swap on an app like Uniswap, this says 378. But in my experience, sometimes that fee can go as high as five, seven, even $10 just to make a swap on the mainnet. So yeah, in terms of giving a final judgment on which the best layer two actually is, at this point, it's very difficult to predict which one's gonna be the winner. However, the ones that I've focused on and the ones that I think are in the running are definitely Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync, Base, and StarkNet, although StarkNet, in my opinion, has been falling down the ranks of the layer twos because it just quite frankly, isn't as fast or as cheap as the other ones. In terms of its development and deployment, Arbitrum may be the furthest along, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the winner in the long run. And so a wise bet is probably to split your assets amongst these different layer twos, especially the ones that still haven't released an airdrop yet, because it's very possible, for example, that ZK Sync has an airdrop at some point over the next year or so. And so you probably wanna be interacting with these different layer twos, although you could prioritize the ones that are in that list that I just mentioned and that have a higher likelihood of airdrop potential. So ZK Sync and Starkware are two that come to mind that have not yet released an airdrop. Obviously though, it does become exhausting trying to interact with all of the different Ethereum layer twos. You can see there's a long, long list of them at this point and you're not gonna be able to realistically use all of these and 
Also, why would you want to? It just becomes too hard to keep track of. But yes, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful and have a great day.